In learning objective two, we're going to look at incremental cash flows, and we're going to look at them on a standalone basis. We want to evaluate all of our major investment projects on a standalone basis. First of all, sunk cost. If we have incurred some cost years ago, uh, it might have had a little bit to do with this project, but uh, since forgotten about it and uh, haven't picked it up recently, uh, costs have already been incurred do not include them. Uh, into this project analysis. So they, we exclude uh, and ignore sunk cost. Opportunity cost, the cost uh, or the most valuable alternative given up if a particular investment is undertaken. An example is if you get up early for a class, 8 a.m., what's the opportunity cost of that? We all know it's sleep. So get some value out of that class. Uh, we do include opportunity cost in our analyses. We want to look at erosion and take erosion into account. Um, Back when the Ford Explorer was very, very popular uh, in the 90s, a new product came along called the Ford Expedition. Both of these products are still uh, being made by the Ford Motor Company. But this expedition would infringe and erode some of the um, cash flows of the existing very powerful and very popular Ford Explorer. So should we take erosion into account? Uh, yes, I take erosion into account when I'm looking at building that uh, very popular Ford Explorer with this new um, product coming online and um, that might erode the sales of the very popular product. Uh, normally these projects, when we start them up, if we're going to start a plant to build a new car, the, um, start up a new plant to build a new car, working capital is involved. What is working capital again from session number one? Current assets minus current liabilities. So whenever we start a new project or a new company, um, these things have to be taken into consideration. Generally, they're negative. It's a negative, a large negative amount of working capital for things like uh, inventory, and we'll have some things tied up in accounts receivable, possibly some small prepaid assets, uh, and then we'll have some liabilities, current liabilities going out to, current, um, um, to uh, add into the networking capital. This will be things like accounts payable, uh, notes payable perhaps, wages payable, interest payable. So anytime you have a startup, you should include some uh, amounts for working capital. Um, we measure cash flow when it occurs, not when it accrues in an accounting sense. We're interested in after-tax cash flows whenever we do this analysis. After-tax incremental cash flows are relevant.